It's Adam here for PC Monitors and today I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the AOC AG251FG which is part of their Aegon gaming monitor lineup. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons on the underside of the bottom bezel. On the front face of the bottom bezel there are some light grey button labels. There's also a power LED which as noted, uh, which as noted in the review glows a fairly bright white colour. There's no option in the OSD itself to disable that, so you could cover it with tape or something else um, if it is annoying you. It uh, glows orange when the monitor is on standby. If you press the first button there on its own, it allows you to cycle through the sources on the monitor, so you can select HDMI or DisplayPort. Second button along there, the left arrow, that allows you to adjust the volume of the integrated speakers or something connected to the 3.5mm jack on the monitor. The right arrow allows you to control ULMB. Um, if you have the monitor set to the right refresh rate and you don't have G-Sync active, and that's explored in the review. Um, the next button there is the main menu system and then there's a power button. The OSD is laid out in AOC's more simple style, which is something that's quite typical of G-Sync monitors, it's a bit more cut down compared to some of the OSD systems. It has a luminance section to the menu which allows you to adjust things like the contrast and the brightness. It has a game colour feature which is very much like the digital vibrance control you will find in the NVIDIA control panel but it's a way to adjust it um, in the monitor itself and it means you can adjust it whilst you're in a game if you want to. If you keep that at 100 it's basically the sort of native colour performance of the monitor. That gives the best um, sort of balance to the colours, the best shade variety, the most natural look to colours. If you increase that, it basically increases the saturation of certain shades. It doesn't extend the colour gamut at all, so it actually causes um, oversaturation and it also crushes shade variety because the, the gamut itself remains exactly the same, but certain shades are just pulled closer to the edge of the gamut. Um, but some people do like a more saturated look, so you can adjust that if you do like that. Um, or you can decrease that to decrease the saturation levels. And if you decrease that sufficiently, the image goes completely monochrome. There is shadow control, which is very much like BenQ's black equalizer. And this alters the gamma curve of the monitor so that dark shades become more um, visible. Just going to change the game colour back to 100. For some reason I only put it up to 50. So shadow control has various different levels. 0 which means it's disabled, 1 which has a sort of mild effect, 2 which has a stronger effect, and 3 which has an even stronger effect. It's designed to give you a competitive edge in games, so to show you what I mean I'll just open the Legom um, black level test. So this is with the shadow control set to zero. Uh, what you see on the video isn't exactly what you'll see first hand. There's also, this room's quite bright so you won't really be able to see the darkest shades um, clearly here on the video with shadow control set to zero. However, it should still highlight what the control does. So if I set that to one, you can see the shades brighten up a bit. Um, you probably can't see it on the video, but the top row is uh, more visible as well to me. Uh, step 2 brightens it up again, and step 3 brightens it up again. So that would have the effect of making enemies in, in dark areas on your game more visible, basically. There are gamma settings. Three different gamma modes on the monitor, they're explored in the review. There's gamma 1, gamma 2 and gamma 3. Something I've actually just realised, um, well I haven't just realised, but I've realised that I haven't mentioned in this video. The When you actually navigate through the OSD, it's a little bit counterintuitive because um, there's a left arrow and a right arrow, so there's a left arrow first and then the right arrow. But to go down in the OSD system, you actually have to use the left arrow, which is the first button, and to go up you use the right arrow. It's usually the other way around, so that's a bit confusing at first. It's just a little thing, but it's a bit weird. Um, 
That's an overdrive feature, which is also explored in the view. You can set that to off, weak, light, medium, or strong. There are various game mode presets, which are also explored in the review, and these change various uh, different settings here to different preset values. as FPS, RTS, Racing, Gamer, or Off. I prefer not to use them. They don't give you any sort of benefit in terms of responsiveness or anything like that. They just change the image. Um, next has Color Setup. That has a low blue light slider and that's again explored in the review um, you can set that between 0 which means it's disabled and 20 which is the maximum effect and what that'll do is it'll give you a warmer look to the image it'll hugely decrease the power of the blue color channel and therefore greatly reduce the blue light output from the monitor um, so that's important if you want a restful night's sleep for example it's not important yeah, sorry it's important not to bombard your um, your eyes with too much blue light before you go into bed. It's very disruptive if you do that. Or some people just prefer that um, in the daytime as well, or any other time they just want a more relaxing viewing experience. Colour temperature. You can set that to user, as I have done here, which allows you to access the red, green and blue colour channels. Um, on my unit at least, and I believe it's a wider issue on user, the colour channels are actually set to 50 by default, but the neutral position, which means the point of optimal contrast and the point you should really be using as a base, is actually 65. Um, so that is a bit odd. I don't know why exactly they've done that. And when you do a factory reset, which I'll come on to later, it doesn't actually reset these to the factory defaults, which is, again, a bit confusing. Um, so there's user, which allows you to access those color channels. Uh, warm, which is the factory default, and you can see that's all at the neutral 65 position. Normal cool srgb and again these are explored in the written review next is osd setup this allows you to change things like the language of the osd the timeout period so how long it's displayed on the screen after the last button press before it'll automatically disappear you can set that between um, five seconds if you're extremely quick or 120 seconds if you're slow and you're recording video like I am here. You can change the horizontal and vertical position of the OSD system on the screen. You can change the transparency level, the transparency, but they call it transparency, which is a little bit weird if you're English, but uh, that's what they call it. So you can have it more or less transparent, the OSD system. There's a break reminder feature. What that'll do is, when the monitor's been on for an hour, it'll just pop a little message up on the screen to remind you that you should consider taking a break. And you're free to ignore that, um, or perhaps if you like to religiously take breaks every hour, you can uh, pay attention and take a break. And finally, there is Extra. This allows you to do a factory reset, which I'm not going to do, because I've set everything up to my liking. There's a deep sleep setting, and this is on by default. It's part of the Energy Star certification uh, program to, to sort of get maximum ratings for the monitor. You'll have deep sleep enabled. It's um, basically, if you put your computer to sleep, deep sleep means that the monitor won't always wake up when you wake your computer up the monitor's in sort of a low enough power state that it's actually ignoring the signal coming from the computer. If you do send your computer to sleep and you're having issues with the monitor not waking up, simply turn deep sleep off and that should mean that the monitor will come alive when your computer resumes from its sleep as well. I don't actually send my computer to sleep, I either have it on or off, so I don't really mind this being on. The difference in power consumption, I mean, it's not something I've measured, but I've read quite a lot about it. it it's not huge. It's sort of really like a fraction of a watt um, difference. And I mean, I'm not saying that's not good to save as much power as you can, but it, it really, if you want to save as much power as you can, you should have the monitor turned on at the plug, uh, off at the plug, sorry, when you're not using it. But uh, that's a different story. So there's at least the option to turn that on or off. USB charge. This means that the USB 
ports will be active and allow you to charge devices when they're plugged in. Um, I believe it also means when the monitor's on standby, including if you've just turned it off with the power button, it'll actually still charge things connected to it. So if you do use your USB ports to charge, just leave that on. Again, it's a power saving feature. If you turn it off, it uses fractionally less power and the monitor, even if you're not actually using the USB ports. ULMB, Ultra Low Motion Blur, which is explored in the review, that is set to off and it's greyed out at the moment. That's because I'm running the monitor at 240 Hz and I've got G-Sync active. This is all explored in the review. If I had it set to an appropriate refresh rate and I had G-Sync disabled, I'd be able to turn that on and there'd also be a pulse width setting, um, which you can access and again that's explored in the review. I'm not going to show you ULMB um, on this video, it's really beyond the scope of this video and all you'll see is the monitor start flickering which um, again it's exaggerated in the video but it's just not useful so I'm not going to bother showing you that. Um, I mean as I mentioned sort of towards the end there, there is something which shows the refresh rate. It shows if G-Sync is active as well or if the monitor is just in its normal mode without G-Sync, it won't have anything there. Or it'll tell you if you've got ULMB active, although that should be quite obvious anyway. It also shows you the resolution that the monitor is currently running at. So that was really all there was to the OSD, on-screen display menu system of the AOC AG251FG. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video. There's also a little link there to information about how you can support the work that we do.